those of you who are able, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we come this morning. Yes, dear God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Reverencing you today, God. Really, how all, realizing how awesome you are, God. And your majesty and your splendor. Realizing the depth of your greatness. Father, let me enter into the house of the Lord this morning, Father. We don't take the opportunity for granted. But we come this morning, God, because we, we love you, Lord. And Father, because we love you this morning, God, we come saying thank you for being God and being God all by yourself. We want to thank you, Father, for loving us enough, God, that you were sent forth your Son, our Savior, that we might be forgiven of all of our sins and all of our trespasses, all of our transgressions, Father. And through Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we're healed in the name of Jesus by the stripes, God. Your word says that we're healed. So, Lord, we thank you this morning that we're healed in our minds, God. Father God, that we're healed in our bodies, Lord, and that we're healed, God. Hallelujah, in our finances, God, and we're healed and set free, God, in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you, Lord, that, that through your Son, Father, that you brought us out of bondage, God, that you picked us up, Lord, you turned us around, you cleansed us, God, and then you put us in a Lord, where we can stand on you. So, Father, we come this morning thanking you for Jesus, God. Thank you for the greatest gift that you could ever give, Lord. And we come this morning thanking you for the blood of Jesus. The blood that's able to cleanse us. The blood that's washing us. The blood that's making us whole. The blood that was shed for us on Calvary's cross, God. Thank you, Lord. The blood that through Jesus, Father God, every one of our taken upon the cross, Lord. Every curse that came against us, God, Jesus did it through his blood. He said that it is finished, Lord. So we come this morning thanking you, Father, for loving us enough, God, that you have sent forth a Savior, that through the Savior we will be saved, we will be redeemed and healed and brought with the Christ, Father God. And we come this morning declaring that all of your works are so good. Your word shall manifest in our lives. Thanking you for forgiving us, Lord. Yes, Lord. Every sin. Thank you, Lord. Every weight. Thank you, Lord. Every idle word. Every idolatrous act. Glory. Every adulterous act. We ask now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you forgive us. Yes, Lord. And restore us back to your good grace and song. That you might hear our cry, you will hear our praise, you will hear our prayer. And God, that you will receive them, Lord, and grant our petitions. For you are truly an awesome God. Thank you, Lord. Yes, you are. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we declare today, Father, that you shall have your way in us. Whatever you came to do today, Father, we avail ourselves so that you can do what you want to do. Whatever it is that you want to do in this house today, Father, we avail ourselves so that your spirit can reign and move freely. We bind every distraction, every attempt of, the attempt of the enemy to enter in. We bind every attempt of the enemy to bind your work. We bind every attempt of the enemy, Father God, to kill the seed that shall be planted today. And we move in the power and authority that you've given us over every unclean spirit. Thank you, Lord. And God, we lose your love this morning. We lose God more of your grace this morning. And Lord, we thank you for your grace, Father God. Not that we take you for granted, Father God, but truly, Lord, we're grateful, Father, that you've been graceful to us, Lord.
we've learned to say that all is well. All is well. And Father, we stand in agreement with your word today. Saying that your word is the truth. And it shall not return to the It shall perform what it came to do. Yes, it will. Thank you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare that it is so. So it is. And every heart say amen. 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 <laughs> 
was lost by Israel because of the behavior of the men of God that was placed over the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, there came a time where the priests who were in charge of the Ark were guilty for having uh, inappropriate relations in the temple. And when they were having inappropriate relations in the temple, amen, God became displeased with them. And there came another point where they were not handling the offering that was brought to the temple appropriately. God gave specific instructions on how the offering was to be handled, that when they burned off uh, certain portions, amen, that this portion was for the priest and this portion was to be consumed by fire for God, amen. But in their greed, they did what they wanted to do and kept what they wanted to keep for themselves. And in their keeping what they wanted to keep for themselves, they put themselves in the position that God would allow Israel and the people of God to lose the Ark of the Covenant in battle. So here it is, years later, David goes and he recovers the Ark of the Covenant. But, 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 the, but the problem is that when David went to claim and recover the Ark of the Covenant, he did not know how to handle the Ark. Because he had not prepared himself for handling the glory of God. All right. Okay. And I believe one of the biggest problems that we have in the body of Christ, amen, is that we want the glory of God. Yes, yes. We want the glory of God to rest upon us, amen, but we don't prepare ourselves how to handle the glory of God so that when we enter into the position where God avails the glory to us, we know what to do with it. Amen. So David, in his lack of knowledge, uh, they, they went and found a cart. They made a cart. You know, we always try to add something new to the kingdom. But God had given specific instructions on how the Ark of the Covenant was to be transported and carried. He gave specific instructions on how many feet the priest was supposed to be ahead of the Ark of the Covenant. He gave specific instructions on how the, the, they had to carry it by the rods on the side. But David, in his zeal to recover what was his, ultimately lost what was his because he did not handle it correctly. Yeah. And a lot of times we lose the gift, the blessing that God has for us because we don't handle it correctly because of the zeal. Oh, yeah. So here is they built his cart and they started to carry the Ark of the Covenant on. And the Bible tells us here, and I'm beginning at uh, verse 1, it says that David gathered all the choice men of Israel, 30,000. And David arose and went with all the people who were with him from Baal Judah to bring from there the ark of God, Amen. whose name is called by name the Lord of hosts, who dwells between the chair. So they set the ark of God on a new cart. Tell somebody, said, tell somebody, just because it's new, don't mean it's bad. Just because it's your new and ideal, don't mean it's a God. And just because it feels good to you, don't mean that it meant for you to do it. So the Bible says, so the Bible says that they set the ark of God on a new chart, and they brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill, and Azar and him. The son of Abinadad drove the new cart. Yeah. And they brought it out by the house of Abinadad, which was on the hill, accompanying the ark of God. And Elhu went before the ark. Then David and the house of Israel played music before the Lord on all kinds of instruments of fir wood, on harps, of string instruments, and tambourines, on, uh, uh, on uh, syringes and cymbals. And then they came to Nathan's threshing floor. As I put on his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen stumped. Then the anger of the Lord was arose against us, and God struck him 
there for his heir. And he died there by the ark of God. And David became angry because of the Lord's outbreak against Azar and called the name of the place Perez Azar to this day. David was afraid of the Lord that day. He said, how can the ark of the Lord come to me? So David would not move the ark of the Lord with him into the city of David. But David took it aside into the house of Obed Edom the Gettai. Now the ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed Edom in the Gettai there three months. And the Lord blessed Obed Edom and his household. The Lord blessed Obed Edom and his household. I just want to talk to you for a minute. Amen. That because of your lack of knowledge, somebody else being blessed with your gift. Oh. I just want to talk about this for a minute. Just because of your lack of knowledge, somebody else is being blessed with your gift. Uh, it's amazing to me how, how, how mighty David was as a warrior, amen, that, 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 that when it came down to transporting the Ark of the Covenant, amen, that David was unfamiliar uh, with what the requirements were to carry the Ark of the Covenant. And it was amazing to me. And the reason why it was amazing to me, because in that period of time, every young man was taught all of the instructions out of the Torah wasn't something that they were excused from. So here it is. I, I began to look at it and I said, well, it wasn't that David didn't know. It was that David just didn't do. Uh, and so I, 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 I began to look at this thing and I started to get insight into the glory that God wants to give to us and the glory of the Lord that he wants to bless us with. Amen. And, and I started to check this out because I got to understand, you got to understand what the Ark of the Covenant was. The Ark of the Covenant uh, was a place where all the precious things that God gave the children of Israel to survive off they, that they needed to live off was placed and stored. And the glory of God rested on the Ark of the Covenant, amen, and as a remembrance to the people, amen, and it was placed in the holy place. So that the people would never forget God's glory. So now here was the glory of God was resting on the Ark of the Covenant. Now, 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 so, 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 so here it is. Our glory is with us. But because we don't handle it appropriately, we end up losing our glory or allowing somebody else to handle our glory. And the other person who we're allowed to have of our glory is receiving the blessings that God has for us. Okay, what you talking about? The blessings that came with the Ark of the Covenant, amen, were intended for the children of Israel. But because the Ark wasn't handled right, David, in his anger, left the Ark of the Covenant because he didn't know what to do. Yeah. And when he left the Ark of the Covenant, amen, he then allowed the blessing and the glory of God that was intended for to be with him with the Ark of the Covenant in the care of somebody else. And I came to tell somebody this morning, it's not that you lost your blessings. It's not that God took your blessings away. The truth be told, you took your glory and you placed it in the care of somebody else because you did not know what to do with it when God put the glory on. The saints of God. A lot of times we sit back and we say, well, I wonder why God hasn't blessed. God already blessed. Amen. But you remember the son, the story of the prodigal son. And how when God gave him, he allowed his father to give him his inheritance. Ooh. How he took his inheritance. And the Bible says that he squandered it. He blew it. On riotous living. Uh, and I believe, I believe a lot of times the glory of the Lord is resting on us. Amen. And the glory is with us. 
And, 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 and what happens uh, in the process of our satisfying our flesh, we somehow take the glory and we transfer it to somebody else because we don't know what to do with it at the time. Okay, what you talking about? Let's just bring this down to plain old language, Pastor. See, 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 some of us, uh, when God reveals the glory to us, he tells us this is his expectation and this is what he wants us to do. Specific instructions, amen. We don't necessarily want the specific instructions at that time because the specific instructions don't fit what we want to do. In fact, we come up with something new, something different outside of God's plan. You know David and his heart. We come up with a new idea, a new twist to the word, amen. Something that fits us outside of the word of God says, and we try to make it fit. Y'all know God ain't ordained no marriage between man and man and woman and woman, but yet we want to take it and twist it and try and bless it. And we still want to say we under God's good graces because we've done something new. But I can't even tell you that every time that we bring something new outside of God's will and try to put it in His will, we're going to find ourselves losing the Lord. And every time that we try to do something that God didn't ordain, we're going to find ourselves losing the Lord. But I came to tell somebody this morning that we got to be like David because the Bible tells me further on that David went back and he researched the word. He went back and said, look, 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 something we did had to be out of order. David went back and said, I need to see what we need to do because I'm going back and get the Ark of the Covenant. He said, because truth be told, God had promised it belonged to the children of Israel. And I came to tell somebody this morning, amen, you might have tried something new and it didn't work for you. You might have tried something different and it caused you to lose the glory. But just because you lost the glory at that time, somebody else is using your blessings don't mean that you can't go back and get what God had in store for you. To be told, it's yours and can't nobody have it. To be told, and to be told, the inhabitants of the Ark of the Covenant, those blessings were theirs. They were just wearing Israel's blessings. So I came to tell you this morning, you got to get up and go get it. Go glory. The Bible tells the Bible tells the Ark of the Covenant it remained in the house of Obadiah Edom the Gentile three months. And Lord blessed Obadiah Edom and all his household. I came to tell somebody this morning, don't think you all that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Don't think you all that. Because wherever God's glory is, that's where the blessings of the Lord are going to be. And don't think you all that because the promise was with you. Because when you step outside of obedience into disobedience, they make you lose the blessing. And wherever you step outside of obedience into disobedience, that's where you leave your blessing. Uh oh, what you talking about, Pastor? David, though, when they were moving Ark of the Covenant and he left it there because he didn't know what to do with it, the place that he left God's glory was the place where the glory of God still manifested. I came to tell somebody this morning that God's not a respected person, amen, yeah. that his glory is true, and wherever he is, he is going to glorify, amen. So I came to tell you, don't squander your blessings, and don't leave the glory behind, amen. Truth be told, you better know how to do what you need to do in this season because God is truly going to begin to bless and glorify. And we don't want to be like David when the glory is with us, not know how to handle the glory and leave the glory behind. Whatever you're doing in this season, Lord, please don't do it without me. But truth be told, whatever you're doing in this season, God, I'm not going to move outside of you. I came to tell somebody that, that David, when he realized that he had left the glory of the Lord in the care of somebody else and they was getting blessed, them and everybody in the household, Says something's got to be done. Something's got to be done. I came to tell somebody this morning something has to be done. The Bible says, Now I was told, King David, saying, The Lord has blessed the house of Obadiah Edom and all that belongs to him because of the ark of God. So David went. And brought up the ark of God from the house of Obadiah Edom into the city of David with gladness. 
this. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Here it is, here it is. Here it is, here it is. When you realize your error. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Don't walk in shame. Go back and restore yourself in the presence of the Lord. And do like David. And David went back and he got the ark of God. Tell somebody, go back and get your glory. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Just because you messed up, just because you failed, amen. Don't stay in the position that you are. Go back and get your glory. I came to tell somebody this morning, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sitting here looking at the house over there and I'm watching them be healed. And I'm, and I'm sitting and I'm looking at the house over there and I'm watching them prosper. I'm sitting and I'm looking at the house over there and I'm watching the glory of the Lord reign. And I'm sitting and I'm sitting there going, wait a minute. Will you mean to tell me that everything God had in store for me, I'm sitting back watching him manifest while I'm sitting here in my pity, while I'm sitting here in my shame. Tell somebody, shake it off. Get up and go back and get your glory. Too many of us were sitting back trying to figure out why God, why me, Lord, when God Bible said, David, he got the Ark of the Covenant and he got it with gladness. And, and the Bible says that it was, was when they, those were bearing the Ark of the Covenant had gone six pieces that they sacrificed oxen and fatted sheep. Oh, what you talking about, Pastor? I just came to tell somebody that when you get the glory of the Lord, don't, don't get so caught up that you forget to give them praise. Ah, yeah, yeah. When God restores the glory back over you, don't get so caught up that the glory's been restored. Now, uh, hallelujah, hallelujah, that you forget to tell them thank you. Here it is, here it is, here it is. Every six steps that David took, the Bible says that they broke down and they gave us. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Yeah, 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 because we see, see, see this and check it out. We don't do oxen and we don't do sheep no more. But what we do is we authorize the sacrifice of praise. Okay, what you talking about, Pastor? When God restores your glory, every opportunity you get, open up your mouth and tell the Lord, thank you. And when God restores your blessing, every time you take a step, turn around.
time to go back and see where the issue came from. Listen, listen. See, some of us dropped the ball.
waiting on somebody to realize when I stepped outside of the will of God to fulfill the lust of the flesh that God didn't take the blessing away. He just left us sitting there. But if you go back and get back into the presence of the Lord, God has something for you. And if you tell the Lord, thank you this morning, if you ask the Lord for forgiveness this morning,
won't fit. Because only what you do for Christ will last. Amen.
Jesus Christ. What else do we need other than Jesus? And God's glory manifested in our life. Because truth be told, when the glory of God begins to manifest in your life, God allows things to start happening on your behalf.
I'm going back to where I left the glory. I'm going back to where I left the glory. I'm going back to where I left the glory. I'm going back to where I left the glory. Amen. Amen. 